Welcome into Winthrop Coliseum. It's East Tennessee State and Winthrop. The Eagles at 2-1 and one, taking on the 1-2 and two visiting Buccaneers. It's been a tough uh, couple of games for both squads. Actually, both teams with uh, with those 1-2 and two records. But what's interesting, Bobby, is East Tennessee and Winthrop, you're going to see two completely different styles. It really is. I mean, when you look at the stats, Mike, and you see they're 1-2, and two, they're... East Tennessee State is averaging 82 points. The Eagles 102. They're shooting 52%, 47. And then three-point shooting, that's where Winthrop has the edge. But I think really what separates the two, Mike, is in this rebounding category. East Tennessee State is out-rebounding their opponents by 20.7 boards per game. But the Eagles are out-rebounding their opponents by 12. So it's going to be an interesting. Winthrop does it with smaller players, quicker to the glass. East Tennessee State, a little larger, a little bigger, a little more physical. Eagles picked up their second win over a fight for 134-99 after winning Saturday at SIUE. And East Tennessee coming off a 75-69 loss at Creighton. Taking a look at our player to watch, and he's been fun this year. Adam Pickett really picked up where he started off last year beginning conference play, Bobby. Man, I want to tell you what. Adam Pickett is a dynamite player, Mike. He's a lefty that creates problems, first of all, for defenses. But he's multi-talented, he's ambidextrous, he can go to his left, he can go to his right. He shoots the three, which he's added to his repertoire this year, and he's quick, lightning to the glass. But I don't want to take anything away from his defense. He comes up with some big steals at critical junctures of a game. And he's a player, Bobby, that really had to sit behind some other players his first two years. His freshman year, he only averaged barely three points a game. He was a little over that his sophomore year. But last year, 9.3 points per game in the season overall. So you can really see the progression uh, that he has made. And really, as you say, he's a two-way player. Well, he's, he's averaging 18 this year. He is shooting. Uh, he's rebounding 5.3, Mike, rebounds per game. That's phenomenal for a, a shooting guard shooting 67%, but the threes, he's seven for 14, 50%, so he's very selective with that. And there you see uh, the starting lineup. He shares the backcourt with Nick Smith and Bjorn Broman. It's been fun to see Michael Anumba, the freshman who's uh, playing in the post, along with Josh Ferguson, another player that really came into his own a little bit last year and uh, has carried that into this year as well. Well, Josh Ferguson is, is another tough defend. He's 6'8". You expect to see him down on the block. Defensively, he's going to be down there. You can see the size of these East Tennessee players. But Josh Ferguson will present his, his own problems with stepping out on the arc. He has the ability to put it on the deck, get into lane, and score. So if you're a big, you better be able to move your feet laterally. If not, Josh will knock threes down and blow around you. All right, Trey Boyd, Patrick Good, Isaiah Tisdale, Jeremy Rodriguez, and Mladen Armas. For East Tennessee State, Ferguson and Armas in the center circle. Isaac Barnett. Nick Heater and Dante Carter are part of this officiating crew, and we are underway here on homecoming in Rock Hill. It's always a big festive day in Rock Hill. Weather beautiful outside, so a lot of great tailgating as uh, those fans matriculate inside Winthrop Coliseum. Looking at two contrasting styles, working inside to block by Ferguson. Well, there, there's, you know, the, the game plan is to play behind the big guy. And then block his shot from in there. We'll see how effective that's going to be. But it's starting off on the right direction, Mike. Armas from Belgrade, Serbia. Here's Trey Boyd, the third, in a handoff. Shot clock at seven. Into the paint, and Numba tries to knock it off of Rodriguez from the Dominican Republic, went to Pope John the 23rd in New Jersey and Northwest Florida State. We'll talk about Steve Forbes and his connection to the junior college ranks, and it's been a big part. Here's a miss. It's gonna be a shot clock violation. The ball hit the glass, then caromed into the iron. So well, shot Mike, clock violation, good defense by the Eagles. That, that That's a good possession defensively. First of all, they get the ball down low Ferguson blocks it. They get a drive to the lane. They get their hands on it. So, And then they have to force the shot. Great way to start the game for the Eagles. All right, Eagles on their first offensive possession. Eagles had seven double-figure scores 
in the game on Tuesday night against Division Three Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer transitioning back to Division Three. Walk-ons got their jerseys for the first time, and they contributed. Here's Tisdale in traffic with the layup, and East Tennessee State starts off 2-0. Good spacing here for the Eagles, Bobby. That was a good movement, Mike. Josh was kind of tied up. They had three or four cutters to give him a break, and he finally found Broman coming over. Ferguson has his block shot, so both starting centers blocking hey, each other. They're, they're trying to set the tone and the pace for all this right now. Double team on Rodriguez, finds Armas. They kick it outside. And a lane opens for Isaiah Tisdale, and he finds it, 4-0 ETSU. Well, Mike, the help side defense, Pickett ended up on the big. He's just got to release him and come across. ETSU from Johnson City, Tennessee. Ball knocked out of bounds, so it'll stay, or it'll go to East Tennessee State. So Winthrop has come up empty in their possessions, their three possessions. It's 4-0 Bucks. Early in the game, a lot of basketball to be played. The Bucks want to pound that ball inside, Mike. Even though they shoot 30% from behind the arc, they've only taken 63 shots with a total of 216, you know, total shots taken. But that's their game right there. Pound it inside, let the big fella use that little left hook. Armas, his first field goal. Ferguson for three off the mark, no good. So Fergo for two from behind the arc. And Tisdale a miss, but the rebound inside, Rodriguez. Good blind pass to get it out of traffic, and now a travel called against Boyd. Well, that, that's the thing that the Eagles are going to have to do, Mike, is that, you know, they, they rebound the ball hard. They get it out. You're going to have to play defensive transition. Six right. nothing right now, Bobby, ETSU. Well, East Tennessee State, Mike, right now is really closing the driving lanes. They're not letting the Eagles get into the paint. They're showing some really great help side defense. Steve Forbes, an assistant coach at Wichita State, and he learned a lot of offensive and defensive principles from Greg Marshall. And here's a tip ball. The layup is good for Nick Smith. Eagles first basket, 6-2. Gets the crowd into the game right now, Mike. A nice little steal, finish inside. Of course, Greg Marshall here and made a big impact at Winthrop University. The school's first NCAA tournament win over Notre Dame, 2006-2007 season. Perfect record in the Big South Conference. And Greg's done a nice job at Wichita State. And that's a good tip and good follow of the play there by Armas. Well, that, that's the thing, Mike, those those kids right there, they're just going to the glass. You don't out-rebound your opponents by 20 sitting back. They're very aggressive at both ends. Smith a miss and a whistle inside. Foul's going to be on Trey Boyd, junior guard from Memphis, Tennessee. First team foul, first foul in the game by either squad. And it's going to send Nick Smith to the line 70% this year. 70% over his career, including at Fordham, makes the first. So Boyd will exit, and we will see Kevin Tucker. You can hear a pin drop in here with Smith <laughs> making that second free throw. Well, I tell you what, Mike, East Tennessee State is going to play 13 players. They have 13 players on a roster that are averaging 10 minutes or more. So you're going to see a revolving door when it comes to that score table over there. There's Tisdale in the corner. It's a three and a foul, and Tucker will go to the line. So the foul's going to go... against Adam Pickett, and it's 11-4 Buccaneers. ETSU trying to complete the four-point play, fouled 
on the three-pointer. It's 11-4 ETSU. And the developing story, Bobby, is the battle on the glass. Here's a missed free throw. Eagles getting shut out on the glass right now. Here's Zunik. And Yukebu can't get it to fall. Well, Mike, one of the areas they got to be able to rebound the ball a little bit. That's their first rebound first of the game. First rebound, yep. Zunik and Yukebu in for the Eagles. Broman and Ferguson are out. Yukebu tried to knock it out of bounds, and instead it went right to Patrick Good. Uh, so tried to do something, tried to make a positive out of a bad position. UK boom, Mike, was falling out of bounds. He lost his balance. If he stepped to the ball, he had a nice dunk. Went to the start and attack the basket from underneath instead of trying to break the lanes, drive down the paint and score that way. They're trying to get the defense to step up, which East Tennessee State has done. Now they're going to attack it with the bounce pass from behind that little man-to-man -man zone, or that man-to-man -man defense right there. Adam Pickett out, Bjorn Broman back in. Tucker getting double teamed. Now it's ETSU trying to probe the Winthrop defense. And an offensive foul, or is it a block? Yep, it's going to be an offensive foul. Yukebu takes the charge. Davian Williamson a little under control in the middle of the lane. You know, at my old and just past the restricted circle, not in the restricted circle. My old colleague coach used to tell you, don't don't help up the lane, help over. But with this restricted area, yeah. <laughs> you have to help up. And Yukebu made the right play by establishing himself and basically took away a monster dunk that would have occurred. Yeah. Armas was getting ready to lower the boom. Absolutely, and it would have come down. There's Ferguson back into the game. Good turnaround. Can't get it to fall, though. It's like cellophane on that lid. You know what? The Eagles just keep getting those close shots. It, it, it almost, Mike, reminds me of the girls' game. You keep getting the good shots, they'll eventually drop. Just play solid defense down here. You're three possession down right now. All right, Harrison, James Harrison, Jr. In for ETSU. Works on Ferguson inside. Gets the bucket. And the lead is nine for the Buccaneers. And a good looking three. That was we were lined up perfectly with that shot, Bobby. Looked pretty good. It? it did. Huh? I, it, lefties have always fascinated me because they have that, that it's a of course a shot from the left side. But what perfect rotation and yeah. the angle we had, you just knew it was going in. And he put a GoPro on you. There you go. File that to uh to our production crew. Here's a three on the wing. That's going to be no good and a good rebound, Yukebu. That's exactly what the Eagles want to do. Box out there. Now, here's a steal by Williams, and it's going to be in for a layup. Williamson are toning for that charge earlier. Tay Williamson did a nice job of reading that bad pass from there. Nick Smith tries to reverse in amongst the trees. The Eagles are getting the, the opportunity, Mike, to score. They just got to adjust their defense, get a couple steals. They'll get back in it. Harrison draws a foul underneath. Josh Ferguson will pick up his first. Eagles will bring in Charles Falden. He did not play Tuesday night against Pfeiffer, dealing with a little bit of a knee, but he's well enough to get back and play today. And Michael Anumba returns on the floor. Nick Smith and Yukebu head to the bench. Well, Yukebo, he's he's got the springs, Mike, to help, you know, grab some rebounds to keep the, the East Tennessee State off the glass. Eagles double team Harrison. Did a good job fighting through that. Here's a three and a miss. It's going to be tipped. And now the Eagles will get possession and push it up the floor. Zuna, can he hit another three? No good. Harrison fighting for the rebound inside with Anumba, and it's going to be last touch by an Eagle, and it's ETSU ball. What's encouraging for the Eagles, Mike, the Eagles are now getting their hands on some offensive. Yeah. You know, early they yeah. had no rebounds. Right. Now all of a sudden they've come alive. So that timeout, Coach Kelsey got on some players about, hey, we got to get some possessions off the glass at both ends of the floor. 
It's now a rebounding margin of six, which was 7-0. It's now 10-4. Although Winthrop needs to start knocking some shots down there. Shooting a paltry 20% right now, two of 10. There's a miss by Harrison. Falden, Bobby's had a nice year. Here's a Numba, and he throws an errant pass, and Eagles will turn it over for the fourth time. Mike, there, there's something great between Anuma and, and Josh Ferguson. They talked about that miscommunication. So in other words, hey, it was my fault. Right. They so they, communication is the key to success. Talk to your teammate. Well, being around this team, Bobby, the very good chemistry for this squad. They like being around each other. You can, you can see it in their interactions off the court. I agree with you, you know, and to me that that's huge about chemistry because it only takes one little speck on the the floor to just screw everything up, you know. We are at the under 12 media timeout. Eagles down eight here at home on homecoming. Don't go anywhere. 15-7 ETSU. Eagles down eight at home to ETSU, a team that came in, Bobby, top three in rebounding in the country, and they have not disappointed. Their rebound margin, 20.7. That's third in the country. And right now they're holding a, uh, a six-point advantage, but the Eagles have actually come storming back to close that because at one time it was like eight to nothing, and there's, you know, you – you close down on the big guys. You just got to keep putting pressure, Mike, to make them make one more pass. Now a foul on Davian Williamson. So Williamson will pick up his second foul as he tripped up Bjorn Broman. Third team foul for the Buccaneers. Each team three fouls. And it'll be an inbound, sideline inbound right in front of the ETSU bench. You see Boyd there guarding Charles Falden. There's Mike Kelsey in the screen, too, with little Johnny Kelsey, his grandson, <laughs> Pat's, Pat's boy. Pat, Pat's dad right there had a nice time visiting with him before the game. Did have a nice conversation. Drives when Mrs. Kelsey comes along. That's a nice layup inside for Nick Smith. Makes the drive from Cincinnati. They were here Tuesday night, drove back. And now they're back again today. Great help side right there, Mike. That, that's the pressure that you have to apply when those bigs get that ball down there from the back side. Well executed by the Eagles. Ball knocked out of bounds. Now we need, next time uh, Mike Kelsey comes down, we need to get the ribs. Oh, Montgomery, Montgomery in. in. So yeah. we're talking about that. It's Montgomery in yeah. in Cincinnati, Ohio. Whoo, man, I'm hungry. I love Pat, Pat was telling us, or Mike was telling us that uh, his family does the Sunday dinner every Sunday, and maybe twice a month they get it from the Montgomery Inn. Once you've had them, you understand. All right. Back. This is a big possession for the yep. Eagles, Mike. They just got to get a great shot. Don't force it. Just work your magic on your offense. Inside for two, no good, just inside the three-point line. Eagles within six. Oh, the long arm of Armas failing there, but he's that was a nice post move. Mike, the last three possessions, the Eagles have done a nice job of moving the post players a little off the blocks. That was another one out there. Rodriguez, good defense. Well, that's the size of the Buccaneers right there. Armas out. Good, no good. And now a number for the Eagles. Nick Smith, no good, but draws a foul here with 10-12 to play. He had a lot of time there. I, I mean, he, he ball faked and then slid and then looked back at the defender like, are you going to recover? You come and defend me? Yeah, just shoot the ball. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing over there? <laughs> well, he's over there because you gave a great ball fake. Rodriguez commits the foul when he tried to recover, and so Nick Smith... Back at the line, hits his third free throw of the game. So I guess Nick Smith 
Nick Smith would be saying, you know, I'm going to get three anyway, fellas. I'll just get them the easy way over here. Second. I, I'll get them from the charity stripe. They all count in the box score just the same. But they're tallied up. They're, it's a slow process. It, it almost reminds me a little bit of the girls game that we did earlier. They got off to a slow start. The rebounding was, you know. And you <sighs> jinxed them. That one missed. I did. <laughs> 15-11. So Winthrop within four here midway well, the through the first half. The last two possessions, Mike, the Eagles have picked up the defense a little bit. They're double teaming the, uh, the post down there, and they're doing that. They're getting their hands on some loose balls, deflections. Here's Falden. Finds the Numba for the dunk, or rather, Ukebu for the dunk. I want to tell you what, there's nothing sweeter. You knew exactly what he was going to do. It's like he bounced off a trampoline. That was a great pass and a good finish for Jermaine. Well, well they've kind of figured out that East Tennessee State's going to close down the dribble drives to the basket. Trey Boyd, a missed three. Eagles can tie or take the lead in this possession. And they're doing it, Mike. They're, they've got great spacing right now in their offense. Anumba tried to find Ukebu again, but active hands for ETSU. Now out on the wing, three no good. And Ukebu fighting Armas for the rebound, and it's going to be last touched by the big man from Serbia. He, he, was, he was begging with the guy. There's Coach Kelsey right there. Bjorn Broman and Josh Ferguson coming back in. Ukebu had to retie his laces. Yeah, you want to make sure those laces are tied so when he starts skying. That was a pretty play. Talk about an unselfish play, feeding your teammate like that. Carlos Curtis comes in, and we see DeAndre Bernard for the first time. Bernard, six foot eight from Toronto, Canada. Well, the Eagles have gotten back in the ball game, Mike, with their defense. That That's, that's the whole thing with... A uh, nice pass from Broman to Zunik. The winter program under Pat Kelsey, you can bet that they'll tighten up on the defensive end when they need a couple stops, and they've been famous for that. And their offense, they're spreading it out. They've knocked a couple shots down. And we've got a tied score with eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. Eagles have done it defensively, climbing back in here, making some shots. Blocking foul inside, basket and the foul. Tisdale, his first point since early in this game. And, and that's a shame, Mike, because that was a solid charge. But because of that restricted area, which I like, I, I really do. But the fact that Winthrop's getting across the lane now, they didn't early in the game, they're getting there and they're, they're creating some problems for the Buckeyes, Buccaneers. Snaps an 8-0 run for Winthrop. Tisdale will attempt the traditional three-point play, does not get it. So it's still a two-point game, 8-16 to play. Eagles pushing. Nick Smith, floater, drops, and one opportunity. Eagles pushing tempo there, Bobby. Well, you know, we talked about that, Mike, because of the size of East Tennessee State and the big guys, you got to get them in that track meet, get them up and down and take their legs away from them. It won't, you won't take them away early in the game, but those last 10 minutes of the second half, you'll see this up and down pace wear on the big guys, and that definitely is to the advantage of the Eagles, and they've got numbers. They've got eight, nine guys that they can go to with that type of talent. And it is good for Nick Smith. He completes the three-point play. He's got 11 points. And, and remember now, Adam Pickett, who we highlighted in the beginning of the ball game, is sitting over there on the bench with two, and Nick Smith has come in to do a great job filling in for him. That's the chemistry of this basketball team right now. Adam Pickett with two personal fouls sitting on the bench right now. And now we get an offensive foul against ETSU, so everything going Winthrop's way now. Well, that's what happens, Mike, when you play to make your own luck. You don't wait for luck. You, you create it yourself, and the Eagles are doing it on the defensive end. Williamson will apply pressure in the backcourt for Bjorn Broman. Winthrop with an 
17 lead. Winthrop's first lead of the game, and now it'll be Winthrop with an offensive foul after Bjorn Broman tried to make, he made the shot, doesn't count because of the foul. And we'll take a timeout. Under eight media timeout. Winthrop 18, ETSU 17 on homecoming in Rock Hill. Eagles by one, 7.48 to play. Eagles have improved their shooting 17%, Bobby. They were 20%, two for 10, now six of 16, 37%. And ETSU, which had been uh, shooting at closer to 50% clip, now 36%. How, how have the tables been turned here? Well, I think is the defense, Mike. East Tennessee State got some really easy baskets early and from three point, they're one for 10 right now. And I think with the defense stopping the inside game has kind of rattled East, East Tennessee State a little bit because of the closeouts. And you Eagles, keep, have, sorry, Bobby, Eagles done a good job rebounding too. Not that time though, but a good block by Ferguson working on Bernard. Went up in transition. A number of the reverse, no good. He goes hard to the deck and now ETSU will push. Good possession down there by Josh Ferguson, telling him to stay out of my house. Like it, it, it's the defensive pressure that the Eagles are putting on East Tennessee State right now. Tisdale with a miss, ball bounces around, and it's going to be a foul inside on Bernard over the top. So that'll be the seventh ETSU foul. Well, Mike, they are they are one for eleven, and what they what it Winthrop has done is they've locked down with the double teams on the post. They've got their help side coming over. They've taken away the driving lanes for East Tennessee State. They're giving them the three, and they're closing out, and they're not making them. And that gave Winthrop an opportunity to get back in there. That and free throws. The Eagles right now are Eagles six have been getting for it done. Seven. Yeah, they've been getting it done at the free throw line. Yep. Second one is no good. Tisdale the rebound. So Ferg one out of two. Winthrop's lead is two. Seven minutes to go here in the first half from Winthrop Coliseum. Well, the way the game started, Mike, you would have thought Winthrop might be down by 20 to start the game. But, boy, they regrouped and got after him defensively. And a good hard bucket inside for Tucker. He's got five points, ties the game at 19. Uh, it's almost like the Nick Smith show out here. I mean, he's got 12 points of our 19 points. So Eagles lose it out of bounds. It'll be East Tennessee basketball, ETSU basketball with Rodriguez triggering the inbound. Tisdale's had a good game, six points. Good job directing traffic today offensively for ETSU. Like the Eagles have done a nice job. You know, that time Armour's got the ball off the block. That's where you want him to get it, off the block, not on it. That time the beneath the underneath basket support <laughs> played good defense there. Absolutely. He got a little bit too deep underneath there, but it stays ETSU basketball. Only two seconds on the shot clock. So once again, Eagles playing good defense. And they will get a shot clock violation. Rodriguez can't get that off in time. Say, Armas did not know that there was only two seconds. Yeah. Somebody didn't communicate right. that because he caught it and looked for a pass. I mean, he could have gone straight up with it instead, right? That's, that's what I thought they were going to do. Throw it to the big kid, two seconds, and shoot it from there. And he turned I mean, that's, out. That's your, really your highest percentage shot rather than try and kick it out. He was not aware of the shot clock. That's a lack of communication by the guards. And how about Nick Smith up top for a three with a hand in the face? He's got well, right 14 now, points. It, it's, it's East Tennessee State versus Nick Smith <laughs> on the off offense, but the Winthrop Eagles on the defense, Mike. Look at that. They're getting their hands on the ball. Playing good team defense, they those deflections. And their backside help is really good. That's going to be out of bounds on ETSU. The Boyd pass inside for Rodriguez, just a little bit too high. You see Rodriguez looking back and communicating with Boyd. Here comes Patrick Good. He'll take the place of Boyd. And Mike, that bad pass comes from the pressure that was on the passer. They had solid defense, and he, and he forced the ball because he didn't have a clear vision on it. 
All right, out goes Jermaine Ukebu. Michael Anumba back in. Here's Charles Falden. With their, trying to work on this three-point lead. And now Falden gets fouled inside. Trying to go to the basket, so he'll go to the line shooting two. That'll be the eighth foul against the Buccaneers. Kevon Tucker, the foul. So the Eagles will have Smith, Broman, Falden, Anumba, and Ferguson on the floor. And the free throw for Charles Falden. Good, his first points of the game. Did not play, remember, Tuesday night, averaging eight. 0.5 points per game, four and a half rebounds a game. And gets both free throws. 75% free throw shooter entering play today. Mike and the Eagles as a team is shooting 75% from the charity strike. Inside Rodriguez, they get it back out. This team likes to go inside out. And there's a three, uh, yep, that's gonna be a three. Oh, that's for good, Tucker. good possession for them, but the Win Winthrop kept it away from the paint. Well, how about that? What an answer. Nick Smith now 16 points. I like what the Eagles are doing, Mike. They're, they're just pushing the bigs off. Well, at yeah, that time, Nick Smith tried to come in and kind of sneak the ball away from Armas, but he was able to catch it and stuff it in. Two-point game. For three, no good Bjorn Broman. Armas rebounds. Big man in the middle, seven rebounds against Creighton. That was a close game. In fact, both losses for ETSU have been by six points. Georgia Southern and then against, uh, and they're going to get a tie up as Broman goes hard to the deck, tangling up with Tucker. Oh, they're calling a foul on Broman. Yeah, they're calling it on Bjorn. The two players going after the loose ball. And Pat Kelsey talking with Isaac Barnett asking for an explanation as two players going for the ball, but I think it was because maybe the explanation is Bjorn maybe came in a little bit under. I don't know. You know what, Mike? They both went up, and it was just the angle that the East Tennessee State player was jumping at that when they hit bodies, it threw him off. It wasn't like Broman jumped into him. Right. That's just my opinion on that. All right, so first on Bjorn Broman, Kyle Zunick comes in for Broman. He's getting looked at by Winthrop Athletic Trainer Jeff Flar. Here's Tucker rising up for three. Knocks it down with Charles Falden right there. So that's 11 points for Tucker off the bench. And now the lead back in favor of ETSU. Here's Zunick in traffic. Draws the foul. Can't get the shot to fall. Patrick Good committing the foul. His first. So the Eagles climbing back in this. It's a seesaw game right now. 3.46 to play East Tennessee with the lead in Rock Hill over Winthrop. Homecoming here at Winthrop Coliseum in Rock Hill. Band getting into it. It's like you playing the bongos, Bobby, right? Well, I tell you what. I might even be able to do that. You got a little rhythm, don't you? Uh, the key word there in that statement, little? Michael, is little, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, the Eagles have gotten into rhythm, Bobby, after being behind as much as seven to taking the lead, and now East Tennessee answering with a little run of their own. Well, Mike, the way the Eagles got back in this is playing solid defense, getting to the free throw line. Now, here's the crazy thing about this whole three-point shooting. Tucker is one for seven coming into this game. He's three for five right now. Kyle Zunick misses the first of two. And so Tucker and Good is the, is the three-point shooter on that team, shooting 38% from behind the arc, eight for 21. But they've done a good job on Good, and Tucker has picked up the slack. And Zunick, 75% free throw shooter, missing two. Close to three and a half left to go in the first half. Close game, ball tipped by Anumba and into the backcourt. So Tisdale will field it and bring it up the floor. Of course, it was tipped, so no backcourt violation. Well, that helped on the shot clock because now they're down to seven seconds. Here's Tisdale in traffic, kicks it out. Tucker's had the hot hand. Does he have another one in him? No. 
Tucker tried to hit it off Zunick. He did not. It looked to me like it went straight down instead of into Zunick. And the official was all over it. He was yeah, standing he was right down and it. just looking. Yeah, that was Isaac Barnett on the call. He Nick Heater and Dante Carter also on this Big South crew. And Nick Heater, of course, is the son of Jerry, Jerry Heater. Heater. Yeah. That's right. Ferguson for three, no good. Anumba fighting Tucker, and it's going to be over the back on Anumba. So now East Tennessee State University in the bonus. Both teams shooting free throws now. It's the seventh on Winthrop, nine for ETSU. Well, Mike, this is not the game that, that we were expecting with the, uh, the Eagles averaging 102 a game and the Buccaneers averaging 82. And we're sitting almost in the first half, 26-27 score. Bjorn Broman coming back in. Got a nice cheer from the homecoming crowd here. You know, he's a tough kid, Mike. You know, Anders, his older brother, who is doing some uh, color with Dave Freeman That's on right. our radio, beating up on his brother as he's growing up. That little shot there. And there's Dr. Mahoney, the president of uh, – Winthrop yeah, University. Yeah, Dr. and Mrs. Mahoney in the house. Yeah. You know, they come to a lot of events. We see them a lot here for both men's and women's basketball. Good supporters of the athletics here. And it's going to be an offensive foul on Nick Smith. So a three-point game, ETSU in the lead. And what a first half well, off I the really, bench for Kevon Tucker. I really expected, Mike, this score to be a lot higher than what it is right now. But I tell you what, there's some defense that's being played out there. The, uh, the it was kind of placed into East ETSU's game plan, right? They want to keep this to be a low-scoring affair. Absolutely. Well, both teams are shooting. Uh, Buccaneers shooting 39%. Wentham shooting 36%. So they're not really lighting it up. But Man. Tucker's the one that, that three for five – Late closeout by Smith and Good, who's the three-point shooter on this team. One of the three-point shooters hits the triple. Yeah, he's shooting 38% from there. I think we've got a problem with the shot clock. They're going to reset, and Ferguson will inbound by the Winthrop bench. Nick Smith having a first half for the Eagles, 16 points. So it's been Tucker and Smith. Now Ferguson. Eagles good ball movement. Trying to find that open spot. Smith is going to be off the mark. And Ukebu tries to save it but is out of bounds. So it's the second time Jermaine has tried to tippy-toe that line but turns it over with 2.05 to go in the half. Winthrop down six. Mike, with two minutes to go in here, the Eagles just want to try to cut that down to maybe three or at the end of the half have a good play, a good momentum play to get them into the locker room. Largest lead, nine for ETSU. And Jermaine Ukebu draws an offensive foul. Looks like Armis, based on his hands up, palms facing up, what, me? And that's his second. That's two on him. And, and he's he, going to head to the bench. He did a lot of damage early, got his, his six points, Mike, early in the game and has not scored since that point. James Harrison Jr. comes in. He's no slouch either, 6'8", 230. Went to Blinn College where Cam Newton played football. Eagle attacking the post. Ferg on the reverse, <laughs> gets it in. I tell you what, Mike, that's a typical play right there. Chin it, find out where the defense is, and he spun around him because the guy was coming high side. ETSU tries to lob it inside. Harrison collides with Tisdale. Harrison kind of hunched over, but now stands tall. It looked like he got something in the chin or nose area, so it'll be a turnover ETSU, and here comes Winthrop with a minute 22 to play. Down Damn. four. Nick Smith has had the hot hand. 16 points. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Falden in traffic into Ukebu. Shot clock winding down. Broman's going to have to put something up. You know no, what? no. That's going to be a shot clock violation. Yeah, I thought they might have had a second on there. No, Bjorn, I think, yeah. was trying to get a quick pass to Ferguson. Maybe needed to shot fake it and put it up. 
Bounce pass would have got pass, it to him. Yeah. Bounce pass. I went, you love the bounce pass. Yeah, I didn't point to your twenty dollar bill that you threw to me earlier tonight. No, no, no. I, that's that's securely back in yeah. my pocket. Yeah, that, that that was a bounce pass move there. <laughs> but the Eagles, Mike, have done a nice job with their hands, pressuring the ball out there. And there's a corner three. Tucker's had the hot hand, and now has sixteen. And the lead is 7, 35, 28. Eagles will burn a timeout here. The user will lose it. And really just want to kind of communicate what that last play they want to run. And that's the biggest thing because you want to have a, a good score that will get the crowd into the ball game. And, and you want to go into the locker room feeling like you've executed. I mean, they've, they've got some things that they'll smooth out at halftime. They've done a nice job with their backside defense uh, that was missing early in the game. And Armis was knocking down the easy ones. They pushed them off the block. Tucker's the answer. That's the one that has to be addressed right now. He's shooting one of seven coming into this, and now he is sitting on four of eight, 50%. And good is their three-point shooter who is shooting 38% from the floor. ETSU averaging six threes a game, Bobby. And right now in this game they have five, so they're one shy of their average before halftime. And Tucker's got four of them. And Tucker's got and four of them. To me, that could be a concern because Good, Good is the one who is really shooting the ball well. I mean, he's eight for 21, uh, shooting 38% from the floor. Really, nobody else is even close to that. Um, and Tucker was shooting 14%. See what they've got dialed up. You think Nick Smith's going to have the ball in his hands at the end? I'd say it's either Nick Smith or... Maybe Josh Ferguson. It's going to be Smith to Ferguson, and Ferguson gets fouled with 4.4 seconds remaining. Harrison thought it was a block. Instead, it's going to be a foul on James Harrison, his first. Well, he may have had his hands on the ball, but there were two bodies laying. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of pinballing going on there. This one I always like the official comes over and he gives him that hip movement, and that's exactly what happened to Josh. He got sandwiched right there. Like he got checked into the boards. But how about that play? A little misdirection, drive, and catching him whirling around after setting that screen and rolling to the basket. Well, great play executed by the Eagles right there to give you that momentum. And if they can get a stop right here, that'll be good. Ferguson, five points. Tisdale in traffic. No good at the buzzer. Stick back will not count. Rodriguez didn't get to the ball in time. So the Eagles will go into the break against the Buccaneers. Trailing by five points after being down as much as nine. Winthrop comes back, and it's a five-point game here at the break on homecoming in Rock Hill. Hey, we welcome you back here. It's homecoming, and, of course, the uh, homecoming court being announced on the floor. Winthrop. Getting ready for a second half action here at Winthrop Coliseum on homecoming. And it's the Eagles down by five. Let's look uh, keys for the second half, Bobby. I'll tell you what, as far as for the Eagles, Mike, I think they have to lock down Tucker and really be aware of Good. Could Good is the three-point shooter. They got to keep pushing the offense up and down the floor, but keep the bigs like they did the, the second part of the first half off the blocks. That creates problems for them when they're not down there low. And East Tennessee State, go back to the power game inside if you can. But the Eagles had an answer for all that. All right, starting lineups the same. Boyd, Good, Rodriguez, Tisdale, Armas for East Tennessee State. ETS, you actually checked that Tucker is in. And so Mike Tucker has been uh, inserted in the lineup for uh, Boyd. I might add one thing. Adam Pickett's got to stay on the floor and be a contributor and between he and Nick Smith, and they got to get some scoring out of Josh Ferguson. He was one for seven. Got to get him some easy baskets. And a foul away from the basketball. Winter with their starting lineup, Bobby, Nick Smith, Bjorn Broman, Adam Pickett, Michael Anumba, and Josh Ferguson. And just like that, a foul for Tucker, who's been a big surprise or at least a, it's a pleasant surprise for ETSU in this game. Maybe not a surprise to them, but he's certainly given them a lift. Well, again, if you look at the stats, he's one for seven. He might be a great shooter, just got off to uh, you know a slow start the first three games. 
but he certainly has proved that he can shoot the basketball from the arc. Four for eight the first half. It's like a volleyball match. And now up top, it's Ferguson for three. Are, are we mic'd? I mean, did they not hear us say that he needs to get involved? I, I think I think you're uh, yeah you're dialed in there. They have an earpiece with with our broadcast call. I'm sure that's see, it. See, and that to me that's that's one of the keys. He's got to bring the big boy out yeah. of there. And the other thing, Mike, the Eagles didn't have any offensive boards. Well, uh, that time Bjorn Brown just a little bit late on Tisdale, and he drives and gets the basket. You have a hard time when you trail an offensive man. Well, there's your bounce pass, but unfortunately there were two Buccaneers there. Yep. Rodriguez, the Euro step, banks it in. Banks open today, apparently. Well, Mike, this is the pace that the Eagles want. Well, the pace first half was certainly to ETSU's liking, and there's an Anumba three. Anumba, and that's there's two threes that the Eagles – shot Mike they only made two in the first half and already they've got two so that's encouraging that's going to spread the defense out open up the driving lanes for the Eagles eventually you and I talked off there Bobby uh, before the game that whoever was going to be able to dominate the pace to their liking the most was going to give themselves the best chance to win and I think that did play out in the first half yeah I, I, I think it did and I think that it Going to cover over the second half, Mike. The Eagles didn't shoot the ball well from the perimeter, but the right. pace was there. That's just a good power move by Rodriguez, fighting off Ferguson and Broman. Well, it, it's starting the same way it did in the first half. E, ET, ETSU pounding the ball inside to their two bigs. And now Tucker gets a deflection, and it's deflected back for Pickett. Free throw line jumper, good! The two people for me, Mike, for the Eagles, Ferguson and Pickett have to score. You know Nick Smith is Austin. Yeah. You know, instant offense. But those two have to give some separation. And there's a whistle on Adam Pickett. So Adam has picked up his third. And, you know, you talked about the halftime key was keeping Adam Pickett on the floor. He's just picked up his third foul. He only played five minutes with two fouls in the first half. Well, Coach Kelsey's going to he, – he's a veteran. Adam Pickett is a veteran. Coach Kelsey's going to wait. But you'll definitely see him come out if he gets four because he's, a, he's another defensive presence on the floor. And he's a dif difference maker, no doubt about it. Tisdale, and it's going to be a blocking foul on Broman. Uh, you got to call that. You got to call that. And he was outside the restricted area, and he looked like he planted his feet, Bobby. He was the primary defender. I, I wish we had a replay, but – things aren't working for us right now but Broman had a forearm up underneath yeah. his chin and an extension and Heater started to call it and then he just stopped at the free throw line the jumper is good for Williamson lead back to five Look, there's plenty of basketball left here the Eagles just have to be patient playing that solid defense and, and then just getting the shots that they want out of their offense. Pickett sealed off, trying to get some help. And it's going to be tipped away by Tisdale, seven seconds on the shot clock. That would have been a good opportunity for ETSU to maybe double team there. That, that could have been awfully dicey. Eagles get the ball back, though, and now it's going to be tipped again by Tisdale. He's going to spin by... Nick Smith, and all alone has an open layup. Leads back to seven. Largest lead of the second half. ETSU led by as much as nine in the first half. Now Pickett doing what he does best. Charges through the lane. Uh, he's got to be on the floor, Mike, because Pickett is one of those guys. He just needs a split second of daylight, and he's gone. He's going to get to the basket. And that's part of the identity this year. They really like to go to the glass. And, you know, Nick Smith can do it. Zuni can do it. Pickett is just superb at that. Good close out there by Anumba on Tucker. Now a whistle away from the basketball, and that's going to be three on Broman. Well, foul trouble starting to mount up for the Eagles right now. Three-team fouls, too. 
for the Eagles. Kyle Zunick will come in, and out will go Bjorn Broman. So Adam Pickett stays in with three fouls. Broman to the bench. Here's Charles Falden checking in, and now there goes Adam Pickett. So Falden and Zunick come in for Broman and Pickett. Williamson in traffic, off the glass, no good. Armis there for the glass. His putback, no good. Tipped around Zunick on the weak side, gets the rebound. Here come the Eagles in transition. Zunick closely guarded by Good. Nice decision by Zunick. And how about that for Nick Smith? I told you, he's, he's instant offense. Pickett's got to stay on the floor, but Pat Kelsey realizes he's got three. He can't pick up that fourth. Armis just slipping by Ferguson. Mike, that's your backside help. It was there early, I mean, in the, right. late in the first half, and it wasn't there just now. Foul up front with 15.31 to play, and the Eagles still at that seven-point deficit. 15.31 to play here in homecoming. Eagles five for five here in the second half, shooting 100% in the second half, but they still trail by five points. Both teams with 12 points here in the second half, so it's an even game so far through the first four minutes, 29 seconds. Well, Mike, the one stat that jumps out at me, and it's, and it's about the offensive end of the floor right now. We talked now. about it at halftime, too. They've got zero offensive boards, yep. and the second chance points, East Tennessee State has eight. They've got 30 in the paint and 18 for the, the Eagles in the first half. East Tennessee State had 18 points, and they've already got 12 already in the second half with 15 and a half to go in the game. ETSU has turned the Eagles over three times. Winthrop has not turned over ETSU here in the second half. Zunick is going to get called for a hand check. So Zunick picks up the fifth team foul for Winthrop. Second for Zunick. Kyle had one foul in the first half. This is his second of the game. And the shot clock issue should be reset. Curtis to trigger. Tell you, that's great defense by Falden right there. He tried twice to go to that baseline. He wasn't allowed, about to let him go. Double team. And a shot clock violation. Good defense. That double team on Rodriguez forced that skip pass and not enough time for Williamson to do anything with it. It caused him some problems in the first half, too. And it's about the same time, Mike, maybe about three minutes later than what they did double team in that post in the first half that caused East Tennessee State some problems. So now the Eagles have just got to get a couple easy baskets right here and just. Floater for Nick Smith, it counts in a foul. Nick Smith has got the hot hand right now. Had a season high 20 points against Vanderbilt and has just picked up his 20th point. He's gonna shoot for an end one here to try and match his season high and career high with Winthrop. Well, he's the one with the, the, the hot hand. And it, as long as he can keep that pace up and keep them in there, Adam Pickett probably will be coming back in around the eight, maybe the 10 minute mark, depending on how this score goes. And it gives him instant offense from both of those guys. But I'm still, Josh Ferguson, somehow they've got to get him in the flow of the game, Mike. He's doing a great job defensively, blocking shots, keeping the Eagles in it and playing that tough defense. But he's got to get some points to loosen it up a little bit. What's the balance here for Pickett? He doesn't want to lose his aggressiveness, but he doesn't want to foul, get his fourth foul. Well, that's the biggest thing. You've got to anticipate that's you know, moving last your feet. By don't, Armis, yeah. So you're saying play with, your play, with your hand, play with your feet, not with your hands. Right, right. right. Just move in position. If you go chest to chest, you've got to charge. If you start reaching, looking for the steal, which he's known to do because he's got the quick hands, don't give the official to call a cheap one on you. He's got to stay on the floor, and he's a veteran. Eagles can tie or take the lead in this possession. 
See, they're going to try to shut down Nick Smith from actually touching the ball. Here's a number with a good second effort, little <laughs> dipsy dude. I'll tell you what, how he got that back up there is beyond me, but what a nice dipsy doodle play right there. Ties our score at 47, under 14 to play. Your backside help, Mike, is, there you go. It's really important. Then he's got to come out and guard Tucker, and Tucker airballed it out of bounds, and Winthrop can take the lead here with 13.44 to play. Well, remember now, Tucker, he had a phenomenal first half. He was only one for seven, so you begin to wonder if Maybe we're starting was, to see the real guy. <laughs> well, you, you don't know. You know, it's still right. early in the season. It's just the fourth game. Stats will change. But the Eagles have just got it right there. You nice got, slip there to Ferguson. Can't get it to fall, though. And now ETSU looking to push with good. Transition three. Rims in and out, no good. Adam Pickett had fallen out of bounds. So that allowed Tisdale to get the ball, and now it's going to be saved by Nick Smith. He's doing everything today. I'll tell you what, though. Nick Smith, Nick Smith made that play right there. That's the worst thing you ever want to do is to throw it back towards their basket. <laughs> but evidently, he knew Josh was there he, by himself. He saw Ferguson. He saw something with Ferguson and threw it to him. Eagles going to make some changes. Ferguson and Nick Smith heading to the bench. We see Ukebu and Bjorn Broman return. Foul on Tisdale. His second. Now, with this offense out there, Mike, Anuma's got to do some scoring for him, and Zunik, and Broman's got to get up and get a couple points in here with this lineup on there. It's a good defense. I was going to say, it's a good defensive lineup. Yeah. Here's Anuma in the corner. No good. Zunik tries to rat out that loose ball, and he's going to tie up Armas. Or are they going to say he's out of bounds? Well, he stepped, he he stepped, stepped out, out of bounds. bounds. Well, what a great hustle play. That come from the other side. Well, the possession arrow would have gone to ETSU, so it, it's the net result, although the Eagles don't get the possession arrow back. You would rather have gone tie up. Absolutely, then yeah, you get the arrow back. Right. right. Yeah. So it's result but not the benefit. Good seal off. Now good. You just want to play solid. Your backside help, is, as long as you push him off the paint like that, you're good with, with Armas. He's done a pretty good job with these secondary moves. And yep. they pick it with the steal. And that secondary defender coming over helped throw the bad pass. Your backside help and the double team on those post players. But what makes that work is the rotations of the players to know where they need to go after that double team. Right. All right, so Broman on the dribble trying to probe this ETSU defense. ETSU making some good defensive adjustments. And here about the adjustment by Zunik knocking down they the triple. They need that. He, he's a three-point shooter. And he shot the ball with confidence, Mike. Kyle Zunik hits a big three. Eagles with the lead by three. Winthrop 50, ETSU 47 here on homecoming in Rock Hill. Winthrop Band here on homecoming. Big stuff trying to get this crowd into it. Winthrop with the lead right now, 50 to 47. ETSU, how about this Winthrop defense, Bobby? 0 of 4, 1 of 7. They haven't scored in the last three and a half minutes. Meanwhile, Winthrop over the last 239, 8-0 run, and over the last four and a half minutes, a 12-2 Winthrop run. Well, they've done a nice job, Mike, with balance. Pickett, Zunick, Josh Ferguson hit the three. I'd still like to see Josh Ferguson when he comes on the floor to get a little more involved in his offense. He's doing a good job with the defense, but if Pickett and the way, it, I mean, it's been the Nick Smith second half in the first half. Yeah, it's I mean, been the Nick Smith show today, no doubt about it. He's played well, and the double team has created problems for them. And a foul on the double team, that's gonna go against Anumba. Looked like it was a clean play, Bobby, but maybe just got a little bit too much of the body in there. Well, I, I, I was kind of blocked. Yeah, out, we were kind of shielded out by that. So this will be the media timeout, the under 12. The last timeout was the coaches called timeout, so the result's the same. Winthrop leading by three, 50 to 47 here in Rock Hill on homecoming. Up three, 11.46 to play. It's been kind of a seesaw type of game. But it's been a good second half day for the Winthrop Eagles. Kyle Tunick, Bobby, right there. That was a big three. Championships. 
Well, Mike, they've had goals, two big threes. Josh Ferguson, Zunik, the timing was perfect. Yeah, and Nick Smith just doing what he's been doing all game. He's, he's in one of those zones, and if you're a smart player, and I know that staff over there is smart, Nick Smith is going to continue to get fed, but the key to this game is this Winthrop defense right now. They've been able to double-team the post. Yep. They do it again on Rodriguez. Here's Tisdale. Now Tucker, who had the hot hand early, he gets a floater, and it's going to be a blocking fight. This official wanted to call it an offensive foul, did they? Yes, they did. It is an offensive foul. Dante Carter, I thought, held up a little bit, but he let the other official make the it call. It was the right call. Yeah, yeah. He, he was, I, I thought at first maybe his heels were on that restricted area. Mike, another, another defensive possession where the Eagles are being stingy right now on, on the points. That is the third on Tucker for ETSU. Winthrop a three-point lead. Largest lead for Winthrop today, five. Largest deficit and a high head share on Armis. That's going to be his third foul. 11-14 to play. And that new rule this year on fouls when the shot clock is below 20, they reset it back to 20 seconds. So good. Good rule. Yep. I, li I like the rule. Give them a, a fair shot. And well, this way it doesn't go back to 30. and it, it Maybe it's too much of an impedance on the defense. Here's Bjorn Broman. Bucket and a foul. Count it for Bjorn. His first bucket of the game. Was that on Armis? Nope. It was... Uh, Yeah, you're right. It is on uh, Armas. That's his fourth. Yeah. You know, we talked about Broman scoring and great opportunity, and he took it right at the big 6'10 kid. Finished the play. And the free throw for Broman, good. 75%, so you knew <laughs> the likelihood of that going in was going to be high. Yep. And a turnover here for ETSU coming off the rails a little bit. Tucker pushed off, and what I told you before, he put that arm up yep. under Broman's chin. It just happened to be in front of the official. It's a good call. So that's going to be the fourth on Tucker. So Tucker with four, Armas with four. So Williamson Co coach is trying to is find in. out. Yeah, and so is James Harrison, Jr. Boy, the pendulum swings back and forth, doesn't it? And you know what? The Eagles have done it. And it travels the call against the freshman Anumba. With their defense, Mike. Six-point lead for Winthrop, their largest of the game. And remember, ETSU, a lead of nine with 14.22 to play. They led by five at the break. Winthrop's defense, though, ratcheting it up here in the second half. And now they don't have the big man Armas, but they do have good, and he is good from three. That's his second three of the game. He now has 10 on the year. So the lead is three for Winthrop. Now Bjorn off the screen. Bounces in. I'll tell you what. Beyond Broman, when he turned, came off that little handoff, he loaded that thing. He wants the basketball right now, Mike. And with Nick Smith off the floor and picking in foul trouble, he's given it. Ten minutes to go, Anumba guarding Rodriguez. Rodriguez floats it over. Four-point lead for the Eagles, 56-52. Pickett contorting, gets the rebound. He's in traffic, goes up again as it blocked from behind by Rodriguez, and now it's Williamson. He'll back it out. Good defensive transition by the Eagles right there, Mike, not to give him anything easy off the block shot. Well, that's the goal in defensive transition. You don't want to turn a turnover into a touchdown the other way, as Pat Kelsey likes to talk about it. Ooh. Pat Kelsey doesn't like that call. He just lowered his shoulder and went like that. He went in like that. Mike. It, he lowered the boom. The thing that, that I always judge charges with, because I'm yeah. a big guy with charges, is if you get hit chest to chest, I mean, you, you're moving your feet. Right, right. And I missed the loose ball over here. You did. I missed. I, you did. That's on me. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a foul on Bobby Stevens. 
a lack of hustle play right there. I'm yeah, not sure I, what Jermaine Ukebu could do. <laughs> he defended it well, but unfortunately I, yeah. the official saw it differently, so it's a blocking foul, and it's going to put Harrison at the line. Both teams now with seven fouls. You know, you, you move up and down. Yep. So the free throw good. He earns a second on the one and one. Harrison, 22% career free throw shooter. These are his first free throws of the year. He's going to miss on the second. It's going to be rebounded by Ferguson. Winthrop's lead is three, 56-53. Nick Smith pushing off balance. Can't get it to fall. Ukebu saves, but Broman can't save it on the sideline. So two kind of errant passes. And now here comes ETSU in transition. Williamson, they kick it back upside. Tisdale for three. And that is good to tie our score. Well, we talked about runs in the game of basketball, Mike. ET, you know, ETSU had one early. The Eagles came storming back. Yeah, now the Buccaneers are on one now. Yeah, the Buccaneers got that 6 0 run over the last minute, two seconds. Three got for three from the floor. The nine point lead cut it to five at halftime. Same thing here. And then the Eagles went up by four or five. Yeah, Eagles had a 12 2 lead or 12 2 run. Yep. To go up 53-47. Adam Pickett will trigger the inbound for the Eagles. Well, this has been a fun game. I mean, you can see the competitiveness just flowing. I, absolutely, and I still think with 8:45 to go, we're still got the best of the basketball of this game right here. And there's a guy I think just has to get started. Well, he got started there in front. Good move. I like what they did, Mike. They isolated him, cleared out everything, and let him go to work. You've got to get Josh Ferguson back into the game offensively. He's doing a great job defensively. And Adam Pickett has just picked up his fourth foul. They're calling a hold on Pickett. That's going to get Kyle Zunick up. So Zunick will come in for... Pickett, who picks up his fourth foul, it's going to put Tisdale at the line. 79% free throw shooter. He's 7 of 9 this year. Two point game, and now it's a one point game. That is the eighth team foul. There have been seven team fouls for the Buccaneers. So Dante Carter, the official, telling Pat Kelsey to move back. And out of bounds is Rodriguez. So after the missed free throw, it'll be Winthrop basketball with a one-point lead, 58-57. Nick Smith has had a fantastic game, 21 points, matching the 21 points he had against Vanderbilt. Of course, this time he hopes it's in a winning effort. Inside, Ferguson loses it out of bounds. 8.05 to play, and ETSU can reclaim the lead in this possession. Foul trouble, four fouls on Adam Pickett for Winthrop. Kevon Tucker for ETSU has four, and the big man, Mladen Armas, with four for ETSU. How's that changed, not having Armas in the game? I don't think it really changed at all, Mike. I mean, you've got the big kid... Uh, Williamson on the floor out there. And you've got Rodriguez back, so they got two bigs right there. Nick Smith ties it up with an acrobatic shot. You got to cut the baseline off right yeah. there. And he's done a great job. Here's Ferguson. Working inside, can't get it over Bernard. Lead is two for the Buccaneers. So it's gone back and forth here. Tisdale gets his man up in the air. Now Rodriguez misses and it's Ferg inside for Winthrop, Ferguson. Like Rodriguez is a player that's shooting like almost 60%. How about Zunick with a bullet pass? Great, great pass in the roll. 
Good pick and roll, ties the score at 62, 6.38 to go. But Rodriguez shoots 60%, Mike, but it's in that lane. He's not a great jump shooter. And good takes Smith to the basket. I'll tell you, this is a fun game to be watching. Maybe we get a couple overtimes while we're at it. 6.23 to play and a timeout on the floor called by the Eagles. We'll take the timeout with the two teams with 6.23 to play. Don't go anywhere. This one's going down to the wire. Eagles down by two to the Bucks here on homecoming. Eagles down two, 6.23 to play out of this media timeout. Winthrop shooting 51% for the game. That's after shooting 37% in the first half. Eagles have been a blistering 13 of 19 here at home in the second half, 68%. And while you say, hey, that's fantastic, and it is, uh, don't sleep on ETSU. They've been 12 of 19 here in the second half, 63%. So both teams getting up and down the floor. They really are. And, and it's not a lack of defense right now. Not quite as brutal as was the first half. The offense is lightening up a little bit. But it's interesting, I'm looking at the stats, Tucker in the first half had 16. He's sitting on 16. Tisdale had six. It's the Tisdale second. He's sitting yeah. on 17 in the second half. But Ferguson has scored. Broman has scored. And he scored again. Bjorn Broman, his second three of the game, he's got nine. And now we're going to get an offensive foul here against ETSU. And it'll be with the basketball. Stuck that, that leg out there and clip Broman. Second on Bernard. Remember, foul trouble for but the Buccaneers. Four on Tucker, four on Armis. Winthrop has four on Adam Pickett. Charles Falden for Winthrop, under six to play. Good almost got his hands on that. Working inside, Ferguson gets the bucket. Big one for the big man. Thought he got bumped a little bit on that initial move, and he hung in there with it. Nice little jump hook with the big fella. Ferg has 14, Eagles 3, 67-64. Little over five and a half to go in this game. Largest lead in the game's been nine. That was ETSU. Winthrop has led by six. Eagles have played really good defense in this possession. Can they hold on for one more? Here's the miss and a rebound for Ukebu. Good defensive possession right there for the Eagles, Mike. Good pressure on the ball. Broman up top. Misses. Ukebu gets the big rebound. Here's Falden for three. It's no good. And a foul with 5-0-1 to play on Falden, it looks like. No, it's going to be on Ukebu. His third. Well, Ukebo came out of nowhere. He's got that springing athleticism. And talking to him before the game, you know, he's really trying to play smarter and stay on the floor. If he commits fouls and not good, not that any foul is a good foul, but if, if he's not on the floor, it's not really helping his team. Right. And I, I, that's a great point, Mike. He's got to be on the floor because of his rebounding abilities. All right, so Tucker back in with four fouls, ETSU. Armis in as well. And Rodriguez loses the handle on it. It was going to be last touch by Winthrop. So it'll stay Buccaneer ball. Falden will go out. Nick Smith will come in. Ukebu staying in with three fouls with 4.35 to play. Inbound, Rodriguez, four on the shot clock, quick shot, Tucker, no good. And it's going to be a shot clock violation. Tisdale got the rebound, but by then it was too late. Second shot clock, the Eagles have held him too. So went to a three-point lead, four and a half to play. Not sure what Dante Carter was looking for. He finally hands off for Ferguson. Ball in play with Nick Smith. Bringing it up the floor. Under four and a half to play here in Rock Hill. Homecoming. And Winthrop hope it's a happy homecoming. And Bjorn Broman got fouled inside by Tucker. 
So Tucker has just fouled out, Bobby. That's his fifth. He's just been disqualified. So he'll leave along with his 16 points. Well, Tucker's not the problem in the second. No, it has not been the problem in the second. <laughs> Tisdale is. But you know what? A guy that goes four for eight, he could get hot again. And again, early in the stats, Mike, it just there's no indication. First of the one and one is good for Bjorn Broman. He's got 10 now. He's the third eagle in double figures. Well, we talked about Broman having to get involved in the offense. He had zero points at halftime. And as you just mentioned, he's sitting on. And this has all been in the second half. Yeah. Eagles lead is five. Rodriguez has it swatted away. That was great. The Tisdale for three. Hits the top of the support. And that's going to turn it over to Winthrop with 3.56 to play. We are under four minutes to go here in Rock Hill. The Eagles have a five-point lead. Don't go anywhere. This one going down to the wire. Not the wire the ball just hit, but it's going down to the wire. Winthrop now just two points behind in the paint, 34-32 to ES ETSU. But how about Michael Anumba here in the second half fighting to the basket, and Bjorn Broman's been hitting up from three. I'll tell you what, Broman, Mike Broman wants the basketball, and they've got him involved in the offense. They've got Josh Ferguson involved in the offense, and, of course, of course Nick Smith, his presence and his, his energy has brought life to him there. Yep, and you still have Adam Pickett, you know, with three minutes to go. You may see him. Adam Pickett's only played 15 minutes because he spent most of the game in foul trouble. Zunick gets it off the rim and in. And one, Michael, and gets fouled. And gets fouled. Now. He's got 10 points too, Bobby. Zunick went to his left hand, Mike, and we talked about those three guys. Zunick, Broman, and Ferguson had to get involved in the second half. Nick Smith has 16 in the first half. He's sitting on 23. Those three guys got involved, and he went in with the left hand and switched it to the right to kiss it off the block for the three-point play. Gets the N1, so the Eagles with a seven-point lead. And still a lot of time to go, Mike. 383 runs in the game with the three-point shot. You got to defend that arc. Inside, Armas has it. Good stop by Ferguson. Rebound goes out. Good hits the three with 326 to play. And we've told you before. And he's good from three. Well, he's shooting 38% from there, and that was good defense right there. They had a hand in his face, and he shot it with a hand in his face. So four-point lead for Winthrop, 71-67. Kyle Zunix had a big second half. Oh, Mike, that, that one right there, you know, Broman's right there, got a hand in his face. There's not much you can do about that. It's, it's like the one that Broman shot earlier over here coming off those screens. What's Pat Kelsey telling his team in the huddle right now? He's talking about taking care of the basketball, defending the arc, don't let good get started, but they have to score on each possession and try to stop. Don't trade baskets with them, and, and a lot of people say, well, that's okay trading baskets. But with a three, you're down two possessions. Right, right. So you, you want to keep scoring, whether it's on the free throw line. You want to keep the clock running as well. But he's talking about solid defense. Keep good in mind. Don't worry too much about Armas because they've done a good job with defending him. Anumba tried to get it out, or rather uh, Smith tried to get it out. And now... A foul, I think it's on Adam Pickett. If it is, that's his fifth, and yeah. he's been disqualified. <laughs> that is for Adam Pickett. So two disqualifications, Tucker for ETSU, and now Pickett for Winthrop, although Pickett really has only played 15 or 16 minutes. So I'll tell you, two guys are gone for the ball. There's been bumping and shoving going all the time. E ETSU is going to re remain, I mean, retain possession yeah. of it. No harm, no foul. I mean, it's been like he's just had a target on his back tonight. 
Well, Williamson will get the first, and if he makes the second, it'll cut this to a two-point game with 3.09 to play. And as advertised, Bobby, this game's going down to the last seconds. At least it's looking that way. So it is going to be a two-point game. 71-69. Smith gets sealed off. Now, Zunick has had a good second half. Ferguson lifts up for three. No good, and good fighting his own teammate Armas for it. Ukebu tried to come over and poke it free. I thought it was another second holding on to it. He may have got the jump ball. That was like an RPO. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so a two-point lead for Winthrop. Here's a three for good, and it is good with 227. He's been an assassin here in the second half, well, he, 14 points. And again, the defender is there. The only way you kind of defend against that, Mike, is try to shut him down where he doesn't touch the ball. Gives ETSU a one-point lead, razor-thin margin. Bjorn Broman for three, no good, and no foul. A little contact there. Not sure what happened, but Bjorn Broman went hard to the deck. 2.04 to play, and ETSU with a one-point lead. Good far out. He'll use that screen from Rodriguez. Rodriguez to stick back. That's no good, and a foul inside, and it looks like that'll be on Ukebu which would be his fourth. So it is on Jermaine Ukebu. So now foul trouble creeping in with Ukebu with four. Adam Pickett has been disqualified from this game with five fouls. Armas has four for ETSU. He's still on the floor. And Rodriguez will be short on the first of two. And this would give the Bucks a two-point lead. I mean, Rod... Here comes a number, excuse me, Bobby, and UK will go to the bench you with a minute got, 49 to play. You got to block out. You can't allow them to get a miss on a free throw. And we're going to get a lane violation on Winthrop, so Rodriguez will get another one. Bjorn Broman kind of flinched, kind of a false start on the offense there, or actually in this case the defense. So another one for Rodriguez, and of course he makes it. 73-71. Time out on the floor, and we'll keep it here. Eagles, Bobby, down two. It's so, be a four. so still plenty of time. So what's Steve Forbes telling his team in the huddle? Well, he's probably telling them to keep the ball away from Nick Smith. One, And then, of course, Josh Ferguson just plays solid defense down there. Keep pounding the offensive glass. They, they just got two good offensive boards down there. Rodriguez is keeping the ball alive. And, you know, it, the biggest thing is just don't allow any open looks on the perimeter. But you got to pound the ball when you go right at Armas because he's a big body down there. You're going to get two or three possessions down there. The Eagles have got a score on here. Wouldn't be a bit surprised, Mike, if you see the Eagles maybe come out on a soft full-court pressure and just more of a soft one, just back it down in here. But Pat's talking about keep the ball out of the paint and do not let good touch yeah, the ball. don't give good an, uh, no. any kind of a look, not just an open look. Right. Um, and, you know, kind of play four against four, but just don't let good have because he's in one of those type of zones right now. He's hit two quick threes. Yeah. So you go from – you know, being up to down two because of that. All right, well, let's reset the game for you. Two-point game, ETSU with the lead. Both teams with ten fouls. Winter with one timeout left. ETSU with one timeout left. Four fouls for Jermaine Ukebu on Winthrop. Armas has four for ETSU. Both teams have a player disqualified. Here's a good matchup inside Ferguson and Armas. And Ferg, oh, can't get it to fall. Rolled in the cylinder and popped out. Well. 133 to play. Well, they they were trying to get that fifth foul on Armas because he's a big body out there. That was a good play on Ferg. Just ball just didn't drop in. It was no. it wanted to go in, right. and then it decided it didn't want to go in. That's been gone in all night, but good's the one you have to watch. There's a miss inside. Another miss. There's Armas. Still another miss. 
And a foul inside with 108 to play. Two seconds. Although the shot clock probably should have. I think the ball hit the rim at some point in that exchange. Well, that's what they've done the last three possessions, Mike. East Tennessee State has just pounded the boards between Rodriguez and, and nice. Armas. That's the fifth on, or excuse me, the third on Ferg. It's going to put Armas at the line, two-point game. 50% shooter this year at the free throw line. He's two of four. It's a two-shot foul, and he'll miss on the first. Well, Mike, the rebounding, we've told you before, East Tennessee State out rebounds their opponents by 20.7. Right now, they have 39 rebounds. The Eagles have 25. So they're starting to creep up to that 20-point that range, and they've done it the last two minutes of the ball game. And a miss here, you got to block out the shooter. It's a must. It's a must. It is a miss. It's a tip. And it's going to be out of bounds. ETSU, how's that not over the back? Interesting. Well, Rodriguez has got such a long wingspan. He was up and over. And and reaching over. Out. Yeah. But again, I thought there was not, some body contact. Not though. blocking out. Yep. That creates it. Ukebu will come in and Anumba exits. And that's what East Tennessee State does, Mike. They do a great job of crashing the boards. They're going to get a fresh 30 second shot clock, too. So the Eagles will have it two more times, Mike, probably. Well, ETSU looking to uh, slow it down here. Well, maybe one. And here they go. Here's Williamson. And it's blocked by Ukebu out of bounds. Not in this house, says Ukebu. He had enough time, Mike. He could have just cuffed that ball. That was great help side defense right there. Nice offensive play by the Buccaneers, but a better by Ukebu right there. It's too bad the Eagles couldn't have found a way to get that ball. Here's good for three. It's going to be off the mark. No good. Zunick the rebound. 41 seconds to go. Here come the Eagles. Nick Smith pushes. Pull up. Good enough. foul. Oh, he's going to the line. Score tied at 73. That's going to be on Rodriguez, only his second. So Nick Smith a chance. And there you go, Mike. Nick Smith off balance, foul big time, but what great concentration. And it's good. Eagles have a one-point lead. Nick Smith sitting on 25 points, Mike. 26 with the free throw. 30 seconds to go in the game. Tisdale, no good. Ball loose. With the basketball with 26.1 ticks remaining. Both teams still have a timeout. Michael Anumba coming in. Jermaine Ukebu to the bench. 74-73. This game has been an all-timer, Bobby. It is. It has been great. The people that didn't come to the game, shame on you. You are missing some unbelievable entertainment. Mike, right now, Pat Kelsey's talking about the man out of bounds. Make sure you can run the floor, but it's a spot throw yep, in. Yep, yep. So you can't run. Make sure you know that. The other thing is anybody that's coming to the ball, you better lower your shoulder and come to it strong because they're going to try to foul you. Yep, yep. They're going to try not to intentionally but they're going to put a body on you, try to get a, maybe a freebie, foul you, get a hold of the ball. you got to win it on the free throw line by them forcing you to foul them. But your post players are probably back. You might have the toss over the front, but the important thing for the Eagles is possession of the ball. Yep. Go to your four corners and don't let them foul you if you can. That timeout called by ETSU, so they yep. are out of timeouts. Winthrop has one remaining. Right. Both teams are in the double bonus, so that means any foul in the next 26.1 seconds remaining, two shots for the team that gets fouled. Winthrop has a one-point lead. Nick Smith has been nothing short of sensational, 26 points, 9 of 12 from the floor, 7 of 8 from the free throw line. He has a three-pointer in there as well, but he has been the engine that has driven this Eagle team. Well, you will see them probably go to a 1-4, Mike. They don't have to score. Remember that. Right. They don't have to score. 
East Tennessee State is probably going to make them earn it because even if they found, he gets two, he right. makes it. You're still down one possession. How much time does ETSU let go off before they foul? Do they foul that, right that, away, or do they try and get a steal after one or two passes and then foul? That, what what's what do you think the strategy is? That's a great question. For for me, I I might foul him right away. If he misses it, now you're only down right. one. You can pound it inside. If you foul him, you know you're only going to get two. What Winthrop has to think about is if they go, go ahead and give it like you're shooting a three. <laughs> but if, if you foul him early, if he makes them both, you're still down one possession. And the way Tisdale and Good can shoot the ball, you're in it. If you let them run out the clock, which you're not going to do, the question is when do you foul? I might try, Mike. I'll tell you what, here I'm going to go. Put me on a spot. No, get, I'm going get, to, your, get your coach's clipboard. I'm going, to, I'm going to foul at about the 15, 18 second mark. I'm going to try to maybe turn them over, get them to walk, take a bad shot, which they shouldn't be attempting to take a shot. Well, the five and players then, that the Eagles are going to have on the floor are good. Is Charles Corbin, by the way. Hey, Charles Corbin. He's on the phone. He's checking it out. Uh, Eagles have five good free throw shooters on the floor right now. Right. Nick Smith, Michael Anumba. Bjorn Broman. Well, again, I wait to the 15 seconds Zunick because Ferguson. it yep. gives you plenty of time to run a play down here. So EST, ETSU has already talked about will foul maybe 15 seconds. He makes both of them. We've got the play already in. And Kyle Zunick uses that timeout. Oh, well, smart. You don't want to throw it away and then get an easy basket. Well, again, you got to come to the ball quick. And Zuni took that one step, which you're allowed. You take a second step, yeah. it's a violation. So, All right, so now no team, neither team has a timeout. Both, team, right. both teams have used their last timeout. Again, you're going to have to try to screen, screen, roll something to the ball. But what EST, ETSU is going to do, Mike, is they're going to switch everything. Yeah. They're going to stay in front of that. Then you might want to think about throwing over the top. Because you got the big guy back here trying to play. Right. They're going to put pressure on the ball. They're going to try to throw over the top. The but problem you, with going over the top is you have to. It has to be a, almost a precision well, pass, right? You got you got Armas back here. If he doesn't go up, right? But you might fake and you go long. But I'm getting the ball into Nick Smith's hands. You yeah. screen. If they switch it, what you do, Mike, is you screen. If they switch it, you roll and go to the ball right there. God. There's a steal. Rodriguez, basket with 21 seconds to go. God. I thought they were out of timeouts. According to our monitor here, no timeouts. But ETSU apparently had one with 21 seconds remaining, and now it's a 75-74 Buccaneers lead. Are you drawing up a play? What are you doing? No. Oh. 21.1 seconds remaining. Coffin corner. Never throw it in there. Right. But forced a bad pass on the return. Let's take a look at that last play, Bobby. Here okay. we go. So you think it's you got like you got you got beyond right here, and you're gonna come into this corner right here, and everybody's you got triple running. Teamed, yeah. You gotta run to the ball. You know, Zunik if he would run to the ball, but you keep it out of this. So you're saying corner, Zunick, Zunick should have come right out immediately, got the ball back, and then take it out? Well, as he stepped in, right. as the ball's coming to him, go to the ball. Right. What he did was he let the East Tennessee State player uh, take that face position. cut him. Yeah. Face cut him. So you come back to the ball. And that would have maybe given Nick Smith just enough time to find a lane to get out of there. Well, they triple teamed the ball. Yeah. So what you're talking about is four against two out somewhere in this floor. Right. Big basket there by ETSU for Jeremy well, Rodriguez. But here's here's the flip side. We were talking about ETSU setting the screen or fouling them down three and having 15 seconds. Well, the Eagles got 21 seconds, and they're only down one. They don't need a three. Yep. They just need two points. Yep. So you could go to Josh Ferguson. You could clear it out for Nick Smith. Is All you need is a two, Mike. All right, here's your ball game. Nick Smith in traffic, loses the ball on the floor, still loose, still loose. 12 seconds to go, it's a oh, jump ball, God. and it goes to ETSU. 
on the possession arrow. Oh, a tough break for the Eagles. And that one inbound pass changes the course of the game. Armis is going to stay in. He thought he was coming out. Eagles are going to guard the inbound. Well, what, what you do with the Eagles right now is you just double team everybody and you foul on the inbounds pass as you get to it to try to get a five. Nick Smith to stop the clock with 10.5 seconds remaining. Okay. Now you're down here. Williamson at Williams. the line, 66%. But he hasn't shot a lot, Mike. He's four for six. So, you know, he could miss this if he misses the – if he makes both of them, you still have a three, and you got three-point shooters on the floor. Makes the first. Eagles trying to go up three and two on the year. ETSU trying to even the record at two and two. Big second free throw here, two point lead for ETSU. It's no good, Ferguson the rebound, nine seconds to go. Nick Smith pushing it up the floor. Five seconds to go. Smith turns the corner. Anumba, Zunik at the buzzer, no good. And the Eagles fall at home, 76-74. An exciting ball game, but the Eagles come up just a little short at the end. I'll tell you what, Kyle Zunik, he shot that ball right hand knowing he couldn't get it to the left hand, and he almost kissed almost, it off the yeah. glass. Uh, it, this is a, a heart-breaking loss for the Eagles right now, Mike. But you know what, Adam Pickett, he just got himself in foul trouble right there. And I'm not saying it's Adam Pickett's right, 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 right. because the other players stepped up for his, his lack of presence on the floor. It tells me something about the Winthrop Eagles. You can go down, doesn't matter who's out. They're going to find a way. But at the end of the ball game, the Buccaneers did what they normally do. They pounded the boards the last four minutes of the ball game. Uh, well, the Eagles battled. It was really a seesaw, nip and tuck game for for really well almost all uh, forty minutes. Well, they were down five. They were down, yeah, nine, down nine. Down five. Down yeah. five. Got a six. Got a five point lead. Got a six yep. point lead. Got the lead again.